you may recognize this. It is a spring, yes, good for you. But did you know that springs can defy gravity? Whoa. Gravity de defy. Gravity defy. Gravity de Look at it fly. Defying. Okay, not exactly, but what if I was to hold the spring like this and let it go? What'll happen? It'll fall, yes, it'll fall, that is that is true. But while it's falling, what happens to this end? Does it stay in one place? Does it go up or does it go down? Let's find out. I'll bring this in so you can really see it. Okay, ready? Watch close. Did you see? Did you, no? Okay, tell you what. We'll watch it again, this time in slow motion. See? The bottom doesn't move, and here's why. When the top of the spring is released, gravity and the tension of the spring are pulling on it. The bottom of the spring is being pulled down by gravity and up by the tension of the spring. These forces cancel out, stopping the bottom of the spring from falling until the top reaches it. Until there's no more tension, and then the top passes the bottom and the whole thing That is how it works. But here is the real question. Will it happen differently with a longer spring? Huh? Well, I just happen to have a longer spring! Let's max it out! Don't tangle it. So, now that I'm up high on this fire escape, let's test it out. Okay, three, two, one, go! A longer spring still has the same forces working on it. The tension of the spring pulling it up and gravity pulling it down. No matter what size of spring, these forces cancel out for the bottom of the spring until the top meets up with it. So there you go, an almost gravity-defying spring! <laughs> uh, hey, there's no door handle on this door. I guess I have to take the stairs. Whoa. Wires, battery, copper wire. Now, if you've already done the electromagnet experiment, here's another experiment that uses all the same materials plus these. Ha! Neodymium magnets, some of the strongest magnets you can get. So, here's what you need. A battery, some neodymium magnets the same diameter as your battery, copper wire, and some pliers. So here's what you do. First thing is you put the batteries and the magnets together like that. Then what you want to do is bend the wire so it's touching the top of the battery and goes around the battery and then touches the magnets at the bottom. Here's what that might look like. I say might because you can do any shape you want. I've made a coil here. And if you put it over the battery, you'll see it only touches the very top of the battery and the magnets at the bottom. And if I let it go, it spins. It's a homopolar motor. What happens is the battery sends an electric current through the copper wire, and that turns it into an electromagnet, which is attracted to the magnets at the bottom, and it spins. So, now, let's max it out. Ha-ha! A D-cell battery, which is larger, and, of course, larger neodymium magnets. And you do the same thing. Make a coil that only touches the battery at the top and at the magnet, and... Ha-ha! It spins! Maxed out homopolar motor. But don't worry, this is not the biggest size we're gonna do. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Maxed out homopolar motor! I have 27 D cell batteries, a giant copper tube, and a neodymium magnet. So I'm just gonna, and then we get, get rid of that. Put this down. Okay, so the first thing I do is attach the neodymium magnet to uh, the batteries. And I've got all the batteries taped together here so they'll sort of stand up like, like this. Huh? <laughs> Giant stack of D-cell batteries. Okay, now what I do is I take the copper coil, 
I take the, the copper coil. Um, I need to get, I need to get, okay, hold on, hold on. I got this. I just need to get the copper coil there. <laughs> I did it. Okay, so I take the copper and I put it on top of the D-cell batteries like this, and then I let it go. <laughs> let it go. Nope, whoa. Home of Polar Motor. Okay, so that didn't work, but that's okay. I like it when it doesn't work, because that's science. It's not science if it works perfectly every time. I mean, you, you gotta have some room for improvement. <laughs> All right. So Anthony and I have built a giant spool racer and have taken it outside to try it out. In order to wind it up, we flipped over the last version on its side. But this spool weighs 200 kilograms. Easy to roll, almost impossible to flip over. Come on, get it. I don't think it's gonna work. It's too heavy to move. Yeah. We should have thought of that before. Well, I'm sure we'll think of something. Uh... So Anthony and I thought about it. <laughs> and thought about it. <sighs> and thought about it. I got it! What? No. No. But you... And the answer finally dawned. What if we roll it this way? Because then that would wind it up, right? That's brilliant! By rolling it backwards, we wind up the bungee cord in one direction, which will make it want to unwind in the other direction. Anthony and I roll it across the parking lot to get it wound up tight. I don't think I'm gonna hold it anymore. Okay. Okay. Let go. Uh, okay, okay, it's wedged. It worked. Uh, all right, one more thing. We're gonna hook the trike up to this one as well. Okay. Okay. So right now, it's all wound up, and when it gets moving, the potential energy in the coil will turn into kinetic. Exactly. Kinetic energy. Now, just in case you're tempted to try this at home, I need to tell you, do not try this at home. We're trained professionals, right? Uh, yes. Yes. Well, as much as anybody can be trained for this, because no one uh. really does this. <laughs> Are you ready? Ready! Okay, here we go! Oh! <laughs> it's working! It's working! Yeah! <laughs> sure enough, all the potential energy we stored in the bungee cords starts to unwind, which rolls the spool and pulls me along behind it. What's more, that big heavy spool has a lot of momentum. Yeah! So when it gets going fast, it just wants to keep moving. It wasn't long before I had to jump off. Uh oh! oh. of kinetic energy. That was a ton of kinetic energy. There you go, science max, experiments at large, massive spool racer. Your turn next? Yeah! Okay. <laughs> so our larger version of the stomp rocket worked, but it didn't go as high as the first version. Chris and I see how we can improve the design. The larger pipe and the larger rocket works really well. It does work really well. I am afraid, though, that the larger pipe means that the same amount of air is flowing slower out the nozzle than it did before. Oh, so because we're moving only this much air, it's not going to go as fast because this is a bigger tube. We need a bigger volume over here to match our larger So our a nozzle. bigger bottle. That's right. I got a bigger bottle right here. Ha-ha! Bigger bottle! So um, hold that, and then all we have to do is tape the bigger bottle. I'm not sure on. if that's gonna. Yeah, like this. Still though, I'm afraid. Yeah. A so then bit. all I need to do is tape it on. Chris and I attach a larger bottle to our tube. We just need some risers to adjust the height. Then we tape it on, and we're good to go. Everything else, including the rocket, stays the same. I still don't understand how you're gonna step on this one. It's just too stiff. I, I have a plan. <laughs> Sledgehammer. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. One, two, three! 
<laughs> it blew the top off the rocket. Right off it the also top. blew the bottom. Huh. Looks like it's a bit rigid to uh, change its volume so quickly. So it's kind of a one-time use thing, huh? I think so. So why don't we try increasing the volume? Even bigger tube, yeah. even bigger uh, container. What's bigger than a, that? That's the biggest bottle they make. What else holds air? What about an air mattress? Do you think we could use an air mattress? I think we could, yeah, a really big air mattress. Oh, totally, high five, All I right. love that idea. Okay, so where were we? Oh, right, our maxed out rocket. A much larger pipe, a large air mattress, and the largest rocket yet. Let's see how it goes. One, two, three, jump. One, two, three. Whoa! Yeah! There you go. All right, let's do it again. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> it works amazingly well. The large volume of air Chris and I can move by both jumping on the air mattress gets transferred through the large pipe, and even though it's a giant rocket, it sails higher than any other version. That was great. That was amazing. All right. There you go. Science Max, experiments at large, moving a lot of air. That has to be the biggest stomp rocket ever. Biggest stomp rocket ever. Let's do it again. Okay. Okay. 